Hello, I'm Molly Hughes in the Denver Post Newsroom with today's edition of Behind the Headlines. We're talking about a story our investigative team is working on about a little known policy that allows Denver police to ban people from the 16th Street Mall and other public places. It's a controversial practice that police say helps keep the community safe and makes the mall a more welcome place for visitors, shoppers and workers. Denver Post Investigations Editor Greg Griffin joins me now to talk about this. It's a story you'll see in Sunday's Denver Post reported by Jen Brown, but you've been overseeing this investigation. What are police doing? Just kind of give us the overview. Well, they're increasingly arresting people who uh, are on the mall and have a record of repeat offenses. And basically they're banning people from, those people from returning to the mall. Uh, and those are generally people who have had multiple arrests for things like shoplifting, uh, aggressive panhandling, and drug use. And how, you know, who are they? Are they homeless people? Are they known addicts? Is it a combination? I know you kind of They're not necessarily homeless people, but, uh, but many of them are because that's, that's a lot of the time where, where they're hanging out. Um, Really, the criteria that police are using is, are they people who are constantly getting in trouble on the mall? And those are the people that they want to take off the mall to make it a safer, more comfortable place for, for the rest of us. And explain how it works. It's like a designated area, right? Yeah, it's uh, about a one mile stretch from Broadway to Wincoop, but it's a, it's a three block wide uh, area so that police basically it makes it easier for police to enforce and it encourages because it's that that large area it encourages them not just to kind of be on the periphery of the mall but just to leave the whole area and mm -hmm. go go elsewhere so from Broadway to Wincoop, 15th to 18th. 15th to 18th that's right so they can't like go okay get off the mall and then they just kind of go around the corner and go I'm still here right right exactly okay and how long has this been going on Area restrictions have actually been uh, going on for quite some time. The police have, for, for years, uh, banned pe people who have been arrested for prostitution on East Colfax. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, will, they will ban them from, from going, from walking the street there. Uh, drug addicts, heroin addicts uh, who have been arrested for shooting up on the, on the Cherry Creek Trail. Uh, also, they use area restrictions there and ban them. But it's just in the last year or two that, that they've really started to, uh, to use it more and more on the mall uh, as an enforcement tool and as a way to reduce crime on the mall, an area where they've really, uh, you know, they've had some problems with, with those kinds of crimes and they're, and they're trying to reduce them. How many people are we talking about here? Is there a way to quantify this? We don't know exactly how many people. Uh, the police department does not track it. So when we asked them for a list of people who have been banned from the mall, they couldn't give us that number. What we were able to find out was through uh, a list of people who have been arrested on the mall for violating their bans, uh, they gave us, a, we, we found in about 27 people who have been arrested um, in 2014. So that's people who, who are arrested and so we think that the number is quite a bit larger than that, the actual number who have been banned. And groups like the ACLU say the fact that police do not keep a list or do not track this is a real problem, right? And why? Well, the ACLU and some other critics say that, that um, they question this, this strategy of law enforcement uh, and say that, uh, first of all, the fact that it's not tracked, we don't know if it's being abused or if it's being done responsibly. Uh, there, was a, there was a study in Seattle, another city where, where area restrictions are used, uh, that, that said that minorities were targeted disproportionately. Uh, so they, there's no way to really know for sure if, that, if that's happening here. Um, and then an another problem that they point out is that uh, just the idea of banning someone from a public place and, and arresting them for simply walking down the street in that public place is not, you know, is, is a violation of, of people's individual rights. I mean, it, it kind of sounds un-American in a way based on, you know, the fact that we have freedom to do and go where we want and do what we want for the most part, right? If we're not breaking the law. So are they, are they kind of n drilling down to pick on people or are these really legitimate? I mean, they say that these are, these are not, they're not just uh, banning someone who has gotten in trouble once. It's, it's the people who keep showing up in, 
in the uh, in the courthouse day after day for causing some kind of problem, you know, maybe aggressively panhandling or causing some kind of disturbance or worse. Uh, and so, you know, prosecutors say that they they kind of see a merry-go-round of these of these people, and and so you know, it, it's a defined group of people that they can focus on. It's not. It's not the general public or even, you know, people who hang out on the mall, even homeless folks or people who might have had some problems before, as long as it's not, it's not happening repeatedly, I don't think that, that it's being um, used mm -hmm. for them. Okay. So the whole idea, theoretically, is to make the mall a little more welcoming and, uh, you know, better for business. Is it working? It's hard to say because they've just been kind of beefing it up over the last few years. Uh, the business owners that we've talked to have, have said that they've seen a reduction in things like shoplifting and they're definitely uh, positive about the partnership that, that business and the police are um, implementing on the mall. That's, in, that's included increased patrols, increased officers, uh, and that kind of thing. So it it's hard to sort out what's working there specifically, but uh, if you talk to the police, they say that definitely this is a tool that, that helps them uh, make the mall a safer place. As a reporter, I'm sitting here imagining trying to get this type of information. Was it a real struggle to be able to collect this data when, you know, first of all, you can't go on the mall to find the people we're talking about because they're right. banned, right? So was it a challenge? Well, actually, we, I mean, we found out about it just while we were working on another story on our mental health uh, series we we encountered a, a couple people who had had these bands um, and you know there are people who had struggled with mental illness and and were disruptive and were arrested uh, various times and so we started asking about it and they um, they didn't really have any information to give us so we we figured out that the best way for us to learn about it is to ask for arrest records for people who had actually been arrested for this on the mall, so it wasn't it wasn't easy to, to get what information we were able to find on this. How long have you been working on it? Uh, maybe about a month. Uh, it you know it was one where we had to get a database, uh, you know, and make a, a records request from them, and then and then filter through it and try and get some additional information from them. And so um, you know, it took Jennifer Brown, the reporter who did this story, um, about a month working on the story because she you know she talked to prosecutors and police and business owners and some of these these people as well who were, mm -hmm. have been subject to these bans. So it was very comprehensive. Great reporting yeah. by you and Jennifer. Anything else you want to add? No, just that it's something that we'll want to keep an eye on in, in, in the future and, and, and see if there are any abuses of it and also to get some more de definite information on how well it's working. Okay. All right, Greg Griffin, Denver Post investigative uh, editor investigations editor. Thank right. you for being here with us. Thanks, Molly. All right. So you can see more of Jen Brown's story in Sunday's edition of the Denver Post. It's really an extensive report. You'll hear all kinds of voices and really get a full picture of what's going on on the 16th Street Mall. You also see more reports online at denverpost.com. Thanks for joining us for today's Behind the Headlines. I'm Molly Hughes in the Denver Post newsroom with DPTV.